Alright guys, put the bug over here at the shop and uh, about to start working on the rear. So we can set it down just a little bit. Alright guys, first thing we want to do is uh, remove this rear wheel so we can get back here to our shock mounts and our torsion bar plates. Alright, with the rear wheels removed, we can go ahead and start taking apart this stuff. So we can go ahead and start taking off the um, shocks that are on here. Uh, these, are, these are the KYB uh, gas adjust shocks like we're on the front. Um, and then we can go ahead and take out um, the stop here. Uh, and I may end up trimming it down, um, actually maybe just above these lines right here. Uh, just so if it does go all the way up, it doesn't, doesn't try to pinch anything. Um, some people just remove them all the way. Uh, which is fine too, but uh, I, and then we're I, I want it to be low. Um, I want to be able to go all the way down with it, but uh, we'll have to see what we can get out of it. All right, when moving the shock, you've got some spacers in here, and you've got a flange here, another one on the other side. So the flange goes there and there, and this one has a lock washer on both sides and then the spacers and the shock would fit in between there. So the front is just a washer and a lock washer. So I don't know what all that's original or what came with those shocks, but that's what's on there. Um, next time we'll remove this and then we'll start taking apart the fender. You gotta do at least these bottom three bolts or so to be able to pull this fender out enough to get this off. So I went ahead and hit these with some penetrating oil. Got the fender moved out so we can plenty of room there. So now we wanna get these three bolts loose for the trailing arm. So once we got these bolts removed, we just wanna jack up on the actual trailing arm here. I'm just using our trans jack because we're up on the lift, but if you're on the ground, then uh, you can use your regular jack. You just want to jack it up out of the way, really, as far as we can get it to go. All right. Now we can work on getting these bolts out. Okay. So these four bolts are removed. Now if this plate will come off, and mine will, you can go ahead and remove it now. Okay, so that's what locks everything into place. So this is just a rubber bushing, and there's another one on the other side, and your spline runs through here, and there's a certain amount of, uh, or torsion bar, the splines on there. Um, so now we've got to knock this out. Now when this thing comes off this stop, it's gonna come down with extreme force. And if your hand is there, if your arm is there, if your head is there, it can hurt you very bad or kill you. So this can be dangerous. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're not under it at all and you're not trying to hit it like this or anything. You're gonna hit it from the backside to knock it off of the splines. All right guys, so I've got this, the bump stop all the way against the, the rest there. And I suppose you could, trim off a little bit of that back there or you can trim just a little bit right here to allow that to slip past it almost does but it doesn't go up quite far enough so right guys the easiest thing to do seems like just trim off a little bit of that plate this seems like the strongest piece out of cutting those two so I trim just a little bit out to give me plenty of movement there all right, guys, so from the back side, we're just going to tap this out just a little bit. There it goes. That popped down there a little bit. So now we can move it on out and uh, adjust it. And I went ahead and sprayed a little black on there. Um, but I'm going to describe, uh, the mark where we're at right now. Put a few 
few nice lines there down in the metal. So I've got an original mark to go from. So if we lose our spot, we know where to go back to. So now we're gonna pull it out just enough to make it drop off the splines. And you've got inner splines, and then you've got the outer splines out here. Um, you can move both of them, um, like some people do. You can move just the outer or just the inner. If you really wanna get specific, um, you can look at the measurements on that and figure out exactly what it is. I'm gonna do, uh, I think, three outer splines up. So instead of it pushing the car down to raise it up, it'll actually be letting the car settle down a little bit more. So I'm gonna go three outer splines this way. So uh, that should give us, I think it's like right at seven inches of travel more, so it'll go down farther and allow the, the wheel to go higher. Uh, and then I'm gonna have the air shocks to be able to adjust it wherever I want it. So you can see here, I pull it out and then you just run it up one notch and drop it in, pull it up, run another drop, uh, another, another notch, drop it in, and the same thing. And I went up three notches, and then this can be pushed back into place, and then we're gonna pull it on back down to where it was. So it's up fairly high. Um, some people uh, would just bring it from here to like there, just to drop a little bit. This is gonna drop a significant amount. So once we get this back on here, then we'll have to, to get it back down to get that over it. All right, guys, I decided to go two splines instead of three on the outer one. So now I just got to get this plate down enough for it to drop back in behind that one. Come on. There we go. So that is set. Now we can drop our axle back down, bolt everything back up, put the shock on. So this is all put back together. For the rear shocks, I did have to grind just slightly off of the edge so that it would fit back up in here correctly. Um, that was the only thing. The top actually bolts up fine on this one. Um, and I'm gonna turn my valve uh, inside so that it doesn't get caught up in any of this. All right, guys, we got the line ran and uh, everything's done on both sides now. The line goes across top of the transmission meets right here and then comes down to this shock and it goes down the front this one actually already had a line for part of the old fuel injection system so we ran it down through there with it and then brought it back up through the hole where our other one comes in right here so that's that's pretty much it now i've already got a hole beside my other one there to hook it up Right, so the wheels are back on. Um, the lines are open right now, so it should drop all the way down as far as it's gonna drop. And then uh, we'll see where it's gonna, what's gonna happen here. We'll see what it does here. Front end's got air in it, so it's not gonna go all the way down. But just curious about the rear. I bet you it's on the engine. <laughs> no, you bet. I bet you the sump's yeah, on the ground. It's, it's low. Yeah, this is why I didn't. I decided against doing three and only did two because I started wondering how low is this thing going to be, and we can't even get the lift out. I look up how the running is. I have to air it up before we can even pull the lift out of it. Yeah, you're right. Man, that looks killer, don't it? Yep. And the exhaust isn't on the ground. It's not. Go. All right, guys. Pretty much worked all the dents out as much as I can. Out of these things they're pretty dented up and uh until this one somebody tried to use a hammer on or something to try to get these on there the other ones they hit with their hand you get big dents on them and stuff you don't have to do that with vita ones it's, and it's best not to even use anything on them except for your hands so you get them on all the way around on the lugs and then just push in and as you work it around it'll be snapped on there like that so you just push right on the edge.
right, guys? Don't forget, you can get $25 off of ceramic coating, the Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King, uh, by putting High Revs 25 in at checkout at avalonking.com. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and share on this video for your chance to win the AMR500 Supercharger.